Welcome back. I'm Joanne Pollock with my series Inside the Studio. I am here this morning with Bill Schwartz in his beautiful gallery in downtown Galt. So Bill, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for agreeing to do this with me today. Joanne, it's a beautiful studio for a beautiful person. Ah, Bill, you're, you're too kind. No, no, I'm talking about me. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Nonetheless, you and I have had a, actually a wonderful uh, art journey together for quite a long time. We have, we have, yeah. Um, and I specifically wanted to talk about the history of your gallery, Bill, because it's pretty exceptional um, to have a place so beautiful and elegant right in the heart of downtown Galt. So tell me how this all came about. Well, Joanna, I guess the... The, I guess it started about 20 years ago um, when I really did my first sale of a painting. Uh, that's kind of when I turned professional about 20 years ago. And it was shortly after I started painting. I always had this pent up demand in me to produce. And um, we lived in a beautiful home on Main Street, but it was built in 1882, and I wanted something that was modern. I wanted something that was glass. I wanted something that was open. I wanted something with ceilings. I wanted something that was vibrant. So Nancy wasn't always on the same wavelength as I was, but um, we uh, found this property. We bought it. We built it. And um, we worked downstairs. Uh, this is gallery, studio, uh, Nancy's workspace uh, in, in front, and then we eat and sleep upstairs. So that's kind of how this came about. But this was a derelict, um, rundown building. It was a crack house. It was a crack house. And uh, you guys have just done such an incredible job here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful building, Bill. Um, I have chosen three words that you very often like to, to, to use, and you've used them with me many times. Inspiration, interpretation, imagination. Yeah. How do they all relate to each other, and is there one more important than the other? Um, you know, that's very interesting. Uh, good, good question. Uh, I tell people, like I told you initially, that you know I paint with three eyes, the inspiration, interpretation, and imagination. And I think it kind of, you know, when I first started with that, um, it was equal, then it went to a lot of imagination, then it went to lesser imagination, now it's back to equal. Hmm. So the way they relate is, uh, I travel a lot. Well, I, I did travel a lot. Well, I, not really even this year. I've mm -hmm. been all over Ontario and Quebec. Mm -hmm. um, I travel for inspiration. And when I travel here, you know, these sketchbooks that I was looking at, um, I have 75 of these now. And what I do with my sketchbook is when something inspires me, I sit down and I sketch it. In pen and ink? In pens? pen and ink. Right. In pen and ink. I don't want it to be any more than my interpretation of what I'm seeing. So this is a good example here. This, this picture here, Joanne, uh, this is what I saw. I, I, I don't work from a photograph. I work from reality. I take a photograph at the end just to hook me back to what it really was like. Mm -hmm. So this is the inspiration. Mm -hmm. This is the interpretation mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. inspiration. Mm -hmm. Then when I come back to the studio or if I'm traveling in my hotel, I will then take that and put it on a canvas and paint it. I'm never, ever seduced by the colors, never. 
So what I do when I end up, well, that's why these, these colors here, they're all imaginary. Uh, you don't see these colors ordinarily in one True. shot. True. So I paint what I feel, not what I saw. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of the crunch of it. Awesome. Um, you are a native Saskatchewan yep. boy, born in, in the prairies, and um, you, uh, I, I read on your little bio that you have always sort of loved art and doodled and painted and been a child prodigy. <laughs> uh, Joanne, not really. Um, what you're what you're saying from my um, from my bio is at age five I won a coloring contest <laughs> and that was one of those the Regina Leader Post had an Easter coloring contest. You know, you fill in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> bunny rabbits. Yes. So I did that and I won first prize. And you were five. I was five, but that ended it. Uh, my parents sent me to art classes at Regina College at six, seven, eight, because they thought I had something in me, but that didn't go anywhere. But I've always had a sense of perspective. So the sense of perspective helped me when I came back 50 years later to this art. And when Nancy came home and said, uh, Bill, I've got this brochure from the Cambridge Library and Galleries. Uh, there's uh, a drawing course that Isabella Stefanescu is conducting. And I thought I would go, do you want me to join you? Uh, do you want to join me? And uh, I said, Nancy, let me take a look at the brochure. I took a look at the brochure and I said, gee, there's a wine tasting course here. Why don't I do the wine tasting while you do the hmm. drawing course? Hmm. Well, that night, it was kind of a sleepless, restless night because I realized that when Nancy suggests something, it may be hidden, but there's always a benefit to following it. And I did. And Joanne, that's when it started. Hmm. It started like that, I think it was January the 19th so wow. 21 years ago. Wow, pivotal moment. Um, well, ju just to sort of think about that for a moment to those early days when you always knew that you had a sense of perspective and you were always attracted to art and so on, why the heck didn't you become an architect? Ah, that was one of the choices I had. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I was in high school, my dad uh, said, Billy, you know, what would you really like to do? And I said, well, I don't think I want to do anything. He said, well, you have to do something. So I uh, kind of... You want to be an artist, <laughs> not, not, not music to a father's ears. <laughs> oh, no. I uh, had an older brother who was 11 years older, and uh, he was working in London, Ontario at that time. And he said... Um, Billy, you know, there's a really good business school at Western. Would you be interested in that? And I said, yeah, yeah, I would be. So I went to Western for business. And at the end of my first year, I was standing at the jobs board. And I remember, Joanne, I had a fellow who was in fourth year. He was standing beside me, Peter Neffley, and I'll never forget this. I was looking at the board and uh, I saw Royal Bank account manager, uh, uh, Nestle Coffee account manager, uh, uh, Bombardier account manager. And I said to Peter, Peter, what are these account managers? He said, well, you know, they settle on a certain customer and they kind of enhance the product for that customer. I said, well, that sounds like a salesman. He said, yeah, it is. I said, well, I didn't come all the way from Regina to spend four years to become a salesman. I want to become a president. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, was, it was very naive. Anyway, I decided that I would not continue in business. And uh, I said to my dad, you know, I really have two things I'd like to do. I'd like to either be an architect or I'd like to be a lawyer. And uh, 
I think they encouraged me into law, which, which is fine, I loved it. But I think 20 years, or you know, 20 years ago, this latent in interest in architecture just came out, and, and that's, that's what I do, I, I do architecture. Right, because you are a, a practicing lawyer, and you have been for a very long yeah. time, and lawyers Well, deal... don't say a very long time. It's only <laughs> been 100 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, lawyers deal in facts. Lawyers deal in, um, yes, sh shades of gray to a certain extent, but, um, you know, things are pretty cut and dried and organized and methodical. Um, and so you have managed to cross the sea into the world of art and um, you're still practicing law mm -hmm. and now you've transitioned into a very successful artist in in Ontario really mm -hmm. uh, you know so that that's how you make that leap is it's that latent uh, suppression of of interest that finally has had a chance to burst forth Joanne that it's an interesting observation. Um, a number of years ago, I was asked to speak at a young entrepreneurs conference as to, uh, you know, one of the questions was, why do you paint? And I said, Gee, God, that's a silly question. I paint because I love it. And I, that night I thought, you know, that's, that's a cheap answer. Because the question is, why do you love it? And I started analyzing it, and I realized that I'm a very creative person. And I came to that conclusion in my practice of law. I don't like doing ordinary things. I like doing things where I can solve a problem. I want to be creative in my solutions and my practice of law, and that's what art is. I don't copy. I don't copy what I see, I paint what I feel. So both are creative, and that's very fulfilling to me, and that's why I, I'm, I'm just blessed that I have both things that I can do that way. One particular spot that I would like to talk about is San Miguel Allende. And you travel there regularly, uh, during the winter, oftentimes? Uh, yeah, I think this past year, February, that was my 21st year. And um, we spent anywhere from a month to two weeks. And uh, San Miguel de and in Mexico City. What is it about San Miguel that is so appealing to you and Nancy? Well, I think it comes down to a whole bunch of things. One is it's close. Two, it's cheap. Three, it's got perfect lighting. Four, it's got a wonderful infrastructure for everything. English, Mexican, uh, US, Canada, health, food. And uh, lastly, but not leastly, lighting and elevation. Uh, it's at 6,500 feet. So the light comes through unfiltered, and it's very precise colors. And the elevation, it's uh, on a high plateau with mountains all around. So you get shots which are down, which are up. They're not necessarily horizontal. You paint every day then when you're in San Miguel? Every day. Every day. Do you paint here regularly? Every day. Every day. It, not necessarily paint, um, right. but uh, something to do with the art. Right. Um, and as I look around, of course, uh, stylistically, I think you're quite recognizable. Would you agree with me? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, can you define your style in any way, shape, or form? No. <laughs> no. No, because I, I, no, I really can't. Other than, I, I truly paint from my heart. Um, and whatever's in my heart is, I guess, the style that comes out. Beautiful. 
Oh, thanks. <laughs> so you you have you have built up a very successful practice, Bill. I, mu I must say, and I know you work hard at marketing your work and getting your work out there. You're held in galleries across Canada, uh, and you've had great great success, but through a lot of of your own hard work. Um, can you comment on how important it is to establish a client artist relationship in order to sell a piece of work? How important is that? Uh, just you have to elucidate on that a little bit, Joanne. Do you mean when the person comes in? Yeah, so if, if a person uh, walks in, say on a studio tour, or they've seen your work on online or your gallery, um, and they walk in, what is it that you do to try and sell your work? I don't try to do anything. I think the work has got to sell itself. When someone says to me, boy, I really like that painting, my response, and this is something I learned from a friend of mine who's an artist, you always say, what is it that you like about that picture? Then that person will start saying, well, you know, I really like the way you've modulated the white with the gray against it, and you know, they'll give an explanation and they'll sell themselves. I don't know whether that's cheap or not, but I always, ask that question if someone says yeah you, know, you have like to, that piece. I, I guess you have to 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 lead them in in a sense so that they you know you know i'm not saying take them by the hand and and but i think it's important and i know personally i've sold art um, more often and more easily by building a relationship with with a client so that bill schwartz they know a little bit about you, they know that you travel, they know that they know your process. They, I mean, people want to know. Oh yeah, Joanne, in that respect, what I do is if someone's interested, I'll, I'll ask them if they're interested in knowing what my process is. For sure. And I tell them about the three eyes, and then I show them my sketchbook, and, and you know, I can relate to that painting coming from this sketch, and. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's right. I forgot. That's fundamental. Right. I need to paint. And I never, I never let anything interfere with that. And, you know, <laughs> Nancy may not be too happy with that, but I find it very hard not to draw or not to paint. And I think that's what I said in my earlier segment. I'm a creative person and, you know, I'm like a dog, uh, you know, if, 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 if I have to bark. So I need to paint and I paint enough, I paint enough that I give away more art to institutions than I sell because I can't possibly sell that much. But you're really the essence of, or you're the epitome of a true artist because you have to paint every day. You have to get it out. I yeah, hear that. I yeah. hear that constantly. Yeah. No, that's right. You don't always use a black underpainting, do you? Always. No? Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, for the last 10 years, I have. Okay. And that's because I came, we were in. We were in Montreal and went to the Museum of Modern Art and, uh, no, not Modern Art, the, the Montreal Museum of Fine Art. Fine Arts. Fine Arts mm -hmm. in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And there was a small exhibition of a painter by the name of André Fortin. Okay. And André Fortin has got a style that I really liked. And one of the things that he said was, when I paint, I always paint with a gray background because it is what the what the Quebec background is. That's the weather of Quebec. Okay. Okay. And I found that it really. I mean, it's a. I can't work on a white background with black chalk, because this takes me back to my childhood. This is a blackboard, 
and I can draw on ah, here there we with go. my... Nice. There we go. Now we're talking. With my chalk, mm -hmm. okay? I can erase, look at the number of times I've erased here because it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, all you do is erase mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. go over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, the style is youth. Got it. Now, this is, this is the scene. Okay. Okay. Yep. This is a scene. Yeah. This is my inspiration. This is my interpretation. Yep, got it. Mm -hmm. This now is my imagination. I got it, Bill. Yeah. And this is perfect. Yeah. Inspiration. Interpretation. interpretation imagination. imagination. Because when I started. Okay, but when you say imagination, you have a template. You have the inspiration. So, it's, it, it, when you say imagination, you're putting the bus in or you're putting uh, certain, certain things, but you're still being, what's the word, not guided, coached, directed to a certain extent from the initial image to the final product. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So but I'm making, I'm improving on nature. Right. My painting will be better than what I saw mm -hmm. because it will have a foreground, a middle ground, mm -hmm. and a background mm -hmm. on a flat sheet of canvas. So are you able to just really let it all go and just see what happens? Well, that, that's what that's what. No, happens. no, but I mean to just to not 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 be uh, formulaic in a sense. Are you just able to stand in front of a canvas without anything on it and do something? No, I I follow from here. No, but can you do that? I don't think so, because my German background doesn't permit that. I knew the answer to the question before I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not an abstract painter. I can't do that. That's not within me. <laughs> well, well it, it is. Like, I did those little pieces up there. They're, they're really fun. You, you want to look at them? I, are they... Are they um... Are they ink? Uh, they're acrylic. These? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought they were. Um... So these these are done. <laughs> these are done by um, the palette when I'm finished or has got color on it. I take paper. I put it over the palette and smush it, and little things come out of it. You know, you crop it, you do it. So, you know, if that's abstract, that that's all I'm able to do. Well, yeah, but a a abstract, yeah. I mean, there is no right or wrong way for abstract, right? So it's, you can... Yeah, whatever happens to please. Right. And your wife would be very good at understanding all of this. Yeah, and she loves those. She has four of them in her apartment. Really? <laughs> I know. But I, I think your question about the vehicles is a good one. And I think they give warmth to the buildings. Yeah. Well, they're fun. They're the, the, the form is round and more gentle, right? It's not... It's not a, a structure. It, and I know why you're doing it. It's a contrast to that structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you push it a little bit further, usually, you know, there's good memories with cars and, and experiences in cars, and you're going on a trip in a car, right? It, it's, it's meaningful. Well, I'm a boy, so, you know, cars well, are... Well, Chicks like cars too nowadays, you know. Yeah. It's um, but your cars are are fun. Like look at this puppy over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tr again I try not to replicate what I see. Mm -hmm. So the you know the 
and, and I try not to have, well, I guess that's why I don't have anything that's today. It's yesterday. I get it. I get it. Why do you think people like your art, Bill? Color. Of course. But besides that, I'm sure some people like that. I mean, when I f first saw your artwork, the minute I walked in here, and, and my first impression was uh, whimsical, fun, um, the old woman in the shoe, that's childhood, my nursery rhyme, you know, the, the funky house. I guess we can wind up this segment with one thought that I have. Um, why do people need art in, to, in their life? <laughs> well, you know, that philosophically has got a really good answer because Nancy is presently taking a course at U of T which relates around art, compassion, and justice. Wow. And it's very, very interesting because there's a philosophy that what art does, and art necess isn't necessarily just painting. It can be sculpture, it can be writing, it can be music, it can be architecture. What it does to a society, it instills compassion, and compassion instills justice. Art is fundamental in society to function creatively. Best answer I've heard in a long time, Bill. And certainly art is essential for our psychological well-being. Whether we, whether we know it or not, it do, as you say, it doesn't have to be looking at a painting. It can be looking at a sunset, it can be looking at a tree, it can be looking at a flower, it could be looking at a beautiful dish on your, on your table. It, it's all art, it's all important, and we all take it in whether we know it or not, right? So, thank you, sir, for spending time with me this morning.